Hey guys, it's Chris here from Holden, and today I'm joined with Matt Corey, who's a performance and documentary filmmaker. Now, I wanted to chat with Matt because recently he shot with the new Lumix BGH1 camera on a recent project, so I really wanted to get an idea as to how he got on with it uh, and what his thoughts were with using this tool. So, Matt, thank you firstly for, for joining us today. Um, can you give us a little bit of a background as to the, the type of work that you typically do uh, and also how this project came about? Yeah, of course. Um, I, like you say, performance and documentary filmmaker. So most of the work I do is theatres, looking at um, theatrical productions and dance performances, often in very low light. Um, so that's one of the, the primary challenges for me. Um, this piece came about as normally at this time of year, I'd be working with Flexus Dance Collective and, and the Arena Theatre in Wolverhampton on live performance and um, there'd be audiences in the theatre people watching it i'd be kind of responsible with the rest of the, the those that i work with for photographing and filming what's going on on stage obviously at the moment there's no audiences in theatres so a lot of the work that i'm doing is either working with supplied footage or in this instance filming for for streaming the events out so this platform event came about to showcase the work of West Midlands performance artists, dancers in this instance, and they needed somebody to come in and, and film the work and make that available for sharing the same day. So was this the first project that you, you shot with a BGH1? And, and if it was, what, what sort of cameras were you using before for this sort of work? Yeah, this is the first time I've, I've used the BGH1. Um, it was actually through talking to Panasonic that they recommended this because it wasn't a camera that that I've kind of come across before. Um, I normally use their GH5s, yeah. um, Panasonic Lumix GH5s. Um, I've been using those for two or three years, I think. Um, so I've, I've got three of those units that I will normally set up as a, as a three camera setup for live performance yeah. and then uh, multi-cam edit in post-production. Of course, yeah, there are lots of differences with, with this camera, but you know, there's also some simil similarities between this and the GH5, uh, particularly the, the sensor size, uh, the dynamic range. Obviously, you get a little bit more with the BGH1, but but what made you want to stick with uh, one, the Lumix family, and, and two, uh, what made you want to actually look at another camera instead of just using your GH5s for, for this project? So, reasons for sticking with the the Lumix family of, of cameras. Obviously, I've got lenses and other associated hardware that fit with the uh, the GH5s and work across to the BGH1s, all the Micro Four Thirds kit that I've got. So that was a, a major kind of selling point for not jumping into a whole new system. Um, originally I was looking at potentially kind of prosumer video cameras for this, but being able to use the, the glass that I've got that I know does a good job was a, a real plus. Um, and also the familiarity with the system a lot of the menus are, the, are very similar on the BGH1. Um, the reasons for kind of using it for this project, they needed SDI feeds for the venue. Um, you can run um, a HDMI to SDI converter from the GH5, but I really wanted to keep the kind of workflow and the, the processes as streamlined as possible. Um, so having that direct SDI out from the, uh, the units was a real benefit. And also the fact that you can run them on mains power um, because you haven't got that fear that I have with the, the GH5 <laughs> the battery is dying on you halfway through. So having that peace of mind was a, was a real big one for me. Yeah, that's understandable. That's understandable. So in terms of obviously you're taking the SDI out, um, what was that going into? Was it going into a vision mixer and then it's doing live switching and then being live streamed? Uh, and if so, were you doing then a local recording on each of the cameras? um for a, for an edit after yeah exactly that exactly that um the sdi feed went into a vision mixer where technicians at the venue were actually doing the the live mix that was going to be streamed out that evening so they, they were pulling that together um but i did take recordings within the cameras as well um because i wanted to have a, a good look at the footage afterwards because it was the first time i'd used these cameras um, yeah. So yeah, it worked. It worked really well for both both purposes. And how did the footage compare to the likes of obviously your your GH5? Um, it's hard to do a direct comparison because they were lighting for video, whereas normally they light and make my life almost unbearable with how dark it is. 
Um, but um, even taking that into account, I was really impressed with the footage I got out of the VGH ones. Um, I was I was able I felt I was able to shoot at lower ISOs. Um, I think because it's got that extra dynamic range, which was really beneficial, and it has the dual ISO function as well. So I think those combined just gave me really nice, clean footage. Um, I'm often using noise reduction software when I'm using GH5s um, just to, to kind of clean things up, and I didn't have to look at any of that with, with using these cameras. No, that's great. And uh, I also noticed that uh, looking at some of your uh, BTS pictures that you use in the uh, DMW XLR1 audio adapter, uh, which of course works across lots of the other Lumix cameras, how did you find the audio side of things with, with the camera? It was great um, using that with the XLR. And originally, I was going to put shotgun mics into the venue just to get a kind of ambient audio for it, but it meant that the, the venue could give me their audio feeds that they were using for the uh, the um, stream filming straight into the, the cameras, so everything just paired up beautifully. Um, and yeah, the, the quality of the audio was, was spot on. So yeah, the, having that ability to plug into what's available in the venue is really a benefit. Yeah, and uh, by the sounds of it for this project, you, you weren't using uh, the networking capability with these cameras because obviously with the BGH-1s, you can get them on the same network and you can control uh, up to 12, I believe, remotely. Uh, is that something you've had a play with to, to get familiar with as to how that would work in a real world project? Or and Because this one was so short notice, it's not something I was able to look at for this one. It, it, it's a really exciting functionality though, um, I think. This is a. It's only going to be a growing area while while we're under the pandemic, um, kind of limitations of, of filming in venues and having that ability to control the cameras kind of centrally, um, I think would be great. So it's certainly something that, that going forward I'd like to have a play about. With. That's amazing. Now, I appreciate your time, obviously, uh, talking uh, with me today about, about the project. Um, guys, if you've got any questions around the BGH1, then obviously do just uh, get in touch with us at Holden. We're more than happy to help you. And of course, if you want to check out some of Matthew's other work, you can click on his website link, which is now on screen, and, and go and check it out. And yeah, for more information, head over to the Holden website. Thank you guys very much for watching.